you see this as a, just an incredible blowout quarter for earnings. What are you looking for? Well, we, we see from actual results in January and February, the biggest earnings growth year over year we've seen in our entire index. And so for the first quarter, that implies public companies will be even better because the March 21 over March 20 comparisons are much easier comparisons because March 20 was COVID impacted. It's a boom. It looks like uh, a post-war economy and the victors optimistic, free spending environment. Uh, we're seeing margins increase. You still have certain sectors that are badly impacted by COVID. They're not going to be blowout compared to last year, but they're improving as well. No, you see uh, hospitality and travel among them uh, and uh, among those that might not participate. Do you see, I mean, we can, I guess we can guess what's driving this, uh, this resurgence. It's uh, the reopening and, and, and the, the better position that we're in. Do you see this profit growth as sustainable over the next several quarters or even longer term? Well, I think it's definitely sustainable for this year. You've got almost $2 trillion of excess savings since the beginning of COVID from people who uh, continue to receive income or receive uh, government benefits and weren't spending. You've got the $900 billion stimulus bill that came in in December. You've got the $1.9 billion, trillion dollars, excuse me, uh, $1.9 trillion Biden stimulus bill, which is barely starting to hit the economy at all. There's probably some double counting in there. So instead of calling that five, five trillion, call it four trillion. That's an enormous, enormous stimulus. Let's put it in perspective. We have seen time after time when gasoline prices come in some, consumer spending goes up, extra discretionary spending when people are putting fewer dollars in their gas tank. The $1,400 a check per person benefit under the Biden bill is like every American is getting their gasoline for free for the next 12 months. It's going to have a very substantial impact on demand, and it's it's going to lead to very fast growth. The one caveat is, will companies be able to staff up to take advantage of it from a labor point of view? Lawrence, I feel like there has to be more than one caveat. You're talking about a lot of positivity as we look towards the economy continue reopening, but there have to be some risks. What about inflation? We got the CPI number this morning. How are you looking at or factoring in how inflation plays a part in the economy right now? Well, I, I, today's report is in some ways almost startling, and I think we didn't have the J&J &J news. Uh, we, we might be talking more about it. Headline inflation up. 0.6% for March. That's an annual rate of 7.2%, highest since 2009. I mean, we're, when you just hear the words inflation of 7%, sure, it's one month, it's off a weak month last year. Uh, but but that's really enormous. On a year-over-year -year basis, we're at 2.6%. Next month, it's going to be higher. And that's just math. It has nothing to do with what's going on in the economy. Uh, a year ago, in April of 2020, CPI was actually down about 0.7 percent. Well, we know it's not going to be down with March up 0.6 percent. You know, we easily are looking at three and a half percent and possibly as high as four percent headline inflation for April. Short term, but will that start a process of resetting expectations? Will that kick off wage inflation? We've got a lot of bottlenecks in the economy. Think about the increase in shipping costs and concern about uh, logistics that came from the Panama Canal being closed for just a few days. But it's not just shipping. We got lucky there. Mm -hmm. It's chips. It's it's uh, corn up 40 percent. Soybeans up 50 percent in price. The economy is booming, but that doesn't mean we have price stability. And so you, you, we really have three paths that could happen right. here. One path is everything works out fine. Another is the Fed steps in and impacts that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.